So at this point, you've meticulously built your bike, got it how you like, ready for the big moment. You've went out, you've got it fired up, but it revs at a high rate of speed. The idle is just up and you can't get it to come down. You've already adjusted the idle screw in the side. That doesn't seem to make a difference. Now you're a little frustrated and you're like, how the hell do I figure out what this is? All right, that's what we're going to discuss today. It is a tidbit dangerous on how you have to do it, but unless you have a shop and can do a leak down test on the entire engine, this is a way you can do it at home and uh, see where your air leak is and or if you have an air leak. So let's get started. Before we get started, I would like to throw out a little disclaimer, if you will. This is not one of our new bikes. This is one that is a customer's bike from around the way that was trying to put it together himself. As you can see, he has a little problem, or maybe you can't see, but yeah, he's having little problems with it. So he brought it by and asked us to uh, get it going for him, and we will. But right now, it is the perfect specimen or cadaver to show you how to check for air leaks on your engine. So I just thought I'd put that out there because uh, I'm sure somebody's going to look at the video and see it's uh, missing a chain and this, that, and the other. Because, yes, it's not fully assembled. So there you have it. All right. Now let's get started on uh, the point at hand, shall we? The first thing we're going to check is to make sure that our slide in our carburetor is going completely up and down and freely. I have had in the past, myself, a throttle that was not completely manufactured properly and the throttle would either stick inside and or not let the cable come all the way back down and was holding the slide up in the carburetor. So to check for that, as you can see, I've already removed the uh, cover for my breather, just to make it a little simpler. We will look inside here. Operate our throttle and make sure that that slide inside here goes all the way down. And if you listen, you can hear it. But most definitely look in there and make sure that that is operating freely because that sticking up will make your bike rev up just sitting there or hold the high idle, I should say. So now that that is operating properly and we know that, reinstall your carburetor, tighten up your clamp, and we'll reinstall the air cleaner. Another friendly little tidbit of something you might want to check when I was saying that I had plastic in the twist grip throttle that would hit and not let it come all the way back and release my slide all the way down, I have had a couple in the past where this part would come down when you operate the throttle and hit the plastic and stop it. And that kept the idle at a high idle. So we had to do a little trimming on that. That is why we check to make sure that our cable is long enough as the right amount of slack and our slide is going up and down because it could be just something as simple as that is the problem you're having and then you don't have to go through the rest of the steps problem solved the next step we'll take to make sure our carburetor does not have a leak at our intake because sometimes you don't get the carburetor on a hundred percent the carburetor has those slices to help it clamp down when you tighten the clamp and if you don't have the carburetor all the way on the intake it can leak air around the base now myself i have some welding tip cleaners or if you have tiny feeler gauges and if you don't have those two all is not lost if by chance you have a loaf of bread that has the twist tie on it and not the plastic tie you can strip the paperwork off of it and it makes a great little 
piece of wire to see if uh, you have a leak. But what I will do is behind the clamp, you can only see a little bit of the slice. Sometimes you can visually see the intake past the little relief cut right there. Sometimes you can't. So to make sure, I will poke this in that slot. If it does not go in there, I can actually feel the intake poking on it. But if it goes down in there, you'll know that your carburetor is not sufficiently on your intake. And that could be where your air leak is. And it may very well be your only air leak. So we'll check that. If that's fine like that one is, we'll move on to the next step. Next, what we will do is check every nut and bolt on the engine. The engine is in two halves, so you could have a case leak. The cylinder slides down on top, so you could have a base gasket leak where the cylinder meets the case. So we will take, this one happens to have a hex wrench set up. Some of them are Phillips screws, regardless of uh, what type of bolt they put together. Take your tool and check them all to make sure none of them are loose from the factory. Or if this problem has found you after riding a bit, just make sure none of them have worked loose. Usually it's not vibration that makes the bolts loose if they are after you've been riding. It's the heating and contracting of the engine. A lot of people seem to think it's vibration, but really it's not vibration so much as the heating and cooling of the motor multiple times. But anyway, we will check all of our nuts and bolts. In this case, bolts. Make sure our intake is tight because you could have a base leak here. And as you can see, this engine hasn't been checked for that. It's part of what we'll do when we go through his entire bike for him. But as you can see, as of right now, those were loose. So he might have had an air leak also. Also, check your head nuts if you have them. This one has the head bolts with the hex head, so you'll check every one of those. Repeat on the other side, every nut and bolt you can find, just to be sure. There's a case bolt coming in from the other side that way on below, which once again helps squeeze the case to make sure there's no air leaks there. So that was our next step. This last step, unfortunately, has a small percentage of danger attached to it. So I thought I'd better stop and completely explain what to use and what not to use. Because that is of the utmost importance on this step. All right, first off, do not use carburetor parts cleaner. Not that it's a bad product, but carburetor cleaner is actually super acidic and you can't get it around any of your cork gaskets, O-rings, any plastic parts, and uh, some brass carburetor parts. It's more used for if you have a really old carburetor generally, and we'll say there's calcium deposits. I mean, it's really ate up. It's had gas in it forever. Or you're cleaning out one of your jets just from a little oil, but I'd only use it on metal parts. I cannot stress enough not to get it on plastic, your neoprene O-rings or rubber O-rings or anything like that. It will eat them up and damage them. It's best to just not use this at all on any of your bike stuff. The second one, which probably should have been the first to not use in this test, is starting fluid highly flammable used to be nothing but ether but now i think they have a different mix in there but there's still ether in it and it has have a chance if you could explode while doing this test so 
So we want to be dang sure not to do that. I cannot stress that enough. You'll see why when we get going. It was going to be a little late if I did it and then go back and tell you what not to use because somebody else might have used it already and found out the hard way. I don't want anybody to blow their hand off or their wrist or their face or any of that. So never use starting fluid in this test. The best product to use, and it doesn't have to be this brand, is brake cleaner. On the scale of things, it is the really lowest of having any chance of it igniting or anything during this test. And it also takes care of a light duty grease and what not have you. They don't expect your brakes to be all calciumed up, so they don't put a ton of acid in the brake cleaner, which is good for us because we don't want that. It does have some solvents in it. We do want a little percentage of that because that's what makes this test work. So let me stress, when you get to this part of the test, get a can of brake cleaner, and that is the product to use. What we're going to do in this last step with our brake cleaner, because some of you might be wondering what's he gonna do with the brake cleaner, we are going to check all of our seals and gaskets to make sure they don't have an air leak. Now it is okay if you take your magneto door off, and then if you go around to the other side and remove your clutch. Why? Because the crankshaft sticks out on either side and has seals where they come through the case. So we might want to give them a little shot to make sure they're not leaking air also. Because we're looking for an air leak, so we're not going to leave any stone unturned. So I'm going to explain to you step by step the safest way to do this so you don't have any problems. We don't want anybody starting any fires or anything like that. So you do not, I repeat, do not want to do this to a up to temperature or red hot engine that has been running. If you've been out riding it, trying to find the air leak and tune on it and it's still red hot, wait an hour or better before you do this test. All right, so what we're going to do is we will take our bicycle outside obviously, because you have to get it started. It's the only way to get it started. As soon as it fires up, you get your handy can of brake cleaner, and you will spray all of the joints of the engine, where every place that has a gasket. So you will spray your, a quick, just a little shot. You don't have to do it massively. And you come down here and give it a little base shot where the jug meets the case. When this door is off, you can spray that on your electrical parts. It won't hurt because you're just giving it a little shot, but you will give it a little shot. And if the engine has any air leaks, when your brake cleaner finds it, it will change the tone of your engine. It'll either drag it down, make it bog. It will be a visible difference. So you'll also go around to the other side of your bike and repeat until you find it or don't find it. Try not to, uh, the exhaust pipe gets hot fast this quick. So be real careful around the exhaust pipe, but just give it a quick little shot. Same thing when your clutch door is off, you'll shoot behind your clutch, that little drive gear, because they both have seals, just to check and make sure. Same thing underneath. And like I said, the engine will change tones or stumble. There will be a visible difference. So you'll know when you get to that area, that that's the area you have the air leak and or have to repair. I've seen people have air leaks after riding for a little bit. And I've also seen them right out of the box. So either way, this is a way to check for that. Just do it safely. I cannot stress doing it safely enough. Like I said, this has a little tidbit of danger to it, but it's necessary because who has a leak down test for a two stroke at their home? Generally nobody, unless you're a repair shop. So you have to do it this way. 
unfortunately. But spray all of your joints, even your carburetor, when the engine's sitting there running, do it quick, one, two, three, just get it done before the heat gets in the engine. Like I said, it'll let you know if you have an air leak, because it will suck the brake cleaner in there, mix it up with the fuel and oil gas mix, make the engine run a little different or bad or whatever you, whatever you want to refer to it as. And then you'll know that's the area you got to work at. 